fire in the forest. And now, evil lifted its head at the noise of chaos. As smoke billowed from Great Park, dark figures began to advance out of the enchanted city. Caretaker rushed into the cottage carrying Princess Amanda in his arms. He laid the child on a cot. Mercy gasped to see her. What's happened? she asked. Firefighting, the old man answered, and the look he gave his wife told all there was to tell. Because of Princess Amanda's disobedience, Grey Park was now vulnerable to danger. Cry! 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 The ranger horns blasted the warning over and over. Fire! Danger! Do what you can for her, but quickly, caretaker ordered, hurrying toward the door. Then come to inmost circle. The enchanter's men are rushing the gate. You'll be needed right away. Immediately, Mercy turned and went to the fireplace where she quickly mixed together a basin full of herb salves. Hero, she called. I need your help. Dip these clean rags into the bowl, then cover the child's burns, like so. Mercy cut away Amanda's singed clothes and covered her with a blanket. Hero watched as the old woman patted compresses into place on all the scorched and burned skin. She took a mug and filled it from the jug of healing draft. Gently, she pulled, poured it down Amanda's throat. Cry! The horn sounded urgently. I must go, Mercy said to Hero. Danger has breached our gates. The old woman paused as she went out the door. If you're threatened in any way, don't be afraid. Speak the ranger cries to give you strength. To the king. To the kingdom. Then she was gone. Hero watched the wounded girl, so still on the cot. What had happened? Her blistered skin, her closed and swollen eyes frightened him. She scarcely seemed to be breathing. Frantic noises from outside intruded into the silence of the cottage. All the able people of Great Park were hurrying toward inmost circle where the sacred flames were being lit. Hero heard ranger shouts, heard the warning horns sounded over and over. Then from far away he heard the ominous, low beat of the death drums of Enchanted City. His ears picked out another sound, too. Nay, 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 nay. It was the battle song of the naysayers, who held the power to freeze people's minds by speaking no into their hearts. Hero knew that burners, spreading fires of destruction with their glowing pokers, and breakers, carrying cudgels to beat to death those who resisted them, would be creeping behind the marching army of naysayers. Hero's heart filled with despair. The boy looked at the young girl on the cot. He knew she was dying. Amanda, Amanda, he moaned inwardly as uh, all the memories of the little princess came rushing upon him. Amanda sitting on a stump in the woods with flowers between her toes. Amanda throwing the caretaker's hatchet with perfect aim to defend him against the faithless ranger. Amanda laughing. Hero knelt beside the cot, his eyes wet with tears. Then he remembered Mercy's last instructions. To the king, he whispered choking on the words. To the kingdom. His heart was heavy, but he repeated the words over and over. Suddenly a quick power seemed to fill him, a force close to anger. He stood and shouted at the top of his lungs, To the kingdom! To the king! Did the room tilt, or was Hero simply overcome by his emotion? Amanda suddenly stirred on the cot, and Hero was aware that he could no longer hear naysayers chanting their cry. The girl groaned under the blankets. Her eyelids fluttered open. Caretaker? Fire! Hero knelt beside her again. He's gone, Amanda. He and Mercy and all in Great Park are hurrying to inmost circle. The girl sat up, swooned, and tried again. Hero fought to keep her from rising, but she was desperate. Don't stop me! She screamed. We must go! We're all in danger! Frantic, Hero turned to search for the healing drought of medicine. Where had Mercy put the jug? but he stopped when he heard someone enter the cottage. Whirling around, Hero saw a dark figure standing in the doorway. It was bent and huddled, hidden beneath the folds of a dark robe, but Hero could see the face, chalk white, with piercing eyes and a chilling grin. The intruder held an ugly club, knobbed and brutal-looking in its hand. It crept, slowly but surely, toward the corner where Amanda rested. Hero wanted to throw himself in the path of this terrible form, but he was as frozen at the moment which seemed to move on crippled feet. The breaker raised his cudgel above his head. Amanda moaned. Then from nowhere, Hero heard a shout. The stamp of rushing feet and the whirl of a flying hatchet filled the room. Then a man in a blue cloak and the ghostly breaker were locked in a fierce wrestling match, which sent chairs and tables crashing and ended with the breaker being hurled out the door into the smoky afternoon. A ranger stood in the middle of the cottage, 
straightening tables and chairs. He shot a grim smile at Hero and Amanda, who were filled with shock. That's one for Great Park, he said as he tossed the cudgel abandoned by its owner into the fireplace. How? Hero asked. The ranger gently and carefully wrapped Amanda in a blanket. My orders were to come to get you two, he answered. Saw him sneaking in. The lousy creatures always take advantage. Now the park's full of his kind. He hefted the girl into his arms and motioned with his head to Hero. Grab something loose fitting that she can wear and hurry. The ranger stepped swiftly out of the cottage, but Hero hesitated, his heart beating wildly at the thought of walking through a burning great park. Something like an unbidden prayer, or an old song half-remembered, quietly rose within him. To the king, to the king. In one movement, the boy rushed after the ranger into the hot and strange afternoon. A strong smell of smoke choked the air. The sky above was boiling with awful yellow-gray clouds. Something shadowy caught Hero's eye. A dark form darted behind a tree, then another followed it. When they finally reached inmost circle, the sacred flames were blazing with power. Rangers inside the circle were shouting commands as the subjects organized into striking units, firefighters, protectors, and flame carriers. Hero would not walk through the flames with the ranger who carried Amanda, and even the girl shuddered and asked to stay outside the sacred circle. The boy and the girl stood together and watched Ranger Commander beyond the fire. The silver insignia flashed on his shoulder and his belt buckle. Mercy, now a strong war maiden, worked beside him. She passed unlit torches to some, maps to others, buckets to others. The king stood in the middle of it all, head and shoulders above most. His face was stern and his eyes blazed with indignation. He too wore the ranger cloak, but in his hands he held a silver scepter which radiated fiery flames. Suddenly, the king tossed back his head and whistled. Then the ranger commander and his wife, Mercy, repeated the call. In an instant, the great stags, the elk and the buck, stepped out of the forest as though they had been waiting for the command. Racks upon racks of horns reflected the light from the ring of flames. At once, the king, the ranger commander, and Mercy stepped outside the sacred flames and leaped to the back of one of the great elks. Many inside the circle followed until a great band of men and women were mounted on the huge animals. At that moment, a young buck without a rider nudged Hero. Let me help you, Amanda. We will go with them. The king leaned high above the withers of the elk he was riding and signaled to the troop behind him. Hundreds of mounted stags moved out of the clearing and through deepest forest. First the lions moved at a walking pace, then at a trot, then at a canter, tracing her their way through the deer trails of the woods. Hero could hear Amanda's low moans of pain as she clung behind him. Soon the riders fanned out in a wide arch, the flames of their burning torches weaving in and out through trees and brush. The mounted soldiers struck a song. To the king! The foot crews answered back. To the kingdom! Hero's heart was filled with a strange courage as the chant echoed back and forth through the forest with the pounding cadence of the animal's hoofs beneath it. A band of foot soldiers broke away when the army reached Outcast Village so they could carry the lame and crippled to a nearby stronghold, which could be protected from the onslaught of breakers. Hero asked one of the men to take Amanda with him. Her quick nod of agreement assured Hero that he had been right. Amanda was too weak to continue on. But Hero knew he must help protect Great Park. He followed the mounted rangers toward outpost meadow, where the dry grass was blazing behind a huge carcass. Smoke bellowed. Great old trees were being consumed by the licking, hungry fire. As they approached the burning area, Hero could see that each ranger now held his hatchet up in his free hand. A hum began, the familiar anthem of power Hero had heard so often. The line of advancing fighters divided in half, each flank taking a side of the wide, burning acres. The rangers, still mounted, lifted their voices in harmony as if to accompany the singing hatchets. Now the king urged his great elk forward. It cantered to the very middle of the burning place, beside the hulk of the dead beast. Hero was filled with awe at the king's courage. The king dismounted, not heeding the wild far leaping around him. He pointed his scepter toward the great ring of men and women who surrounded him. In that instant, a great whirlwind began to blow. The fire in each ranger's torch leapt to the next in line. A circle of sacred flames bounded from man to woman to man to woman, and at last was joined, one burning link spreading around the woods. The wildfire of destruction was surrounded by the flames of the king's power, which would contain the fire while the rangers fought the enemy. The rangers shouted in one voice, To the king! To the kingdom! In the middle of outpost meadow, the king lifted his scepter. The woods, which had been filled with the yelps and howls of the enchanter's minions, fell silent. The naysayers ceased chanting. The pounding of the death drums were stilled. It was the awesome moment before battle. 
Suddenly, with a terrible crash, lightning flashed from the blackened sky and struck the tip of the silver staff. White heat blazed through the form of the king, whose feet were planted wide apart. His body shimmered and glistened, yet he stood firm. He held his head back and cried aloud, To my father, the emperor of all, to the one who always is. Hero realized then that the rangers were waiting for a command. Suddenly, it came. The voice of the rangers' commander roared through the forest, to arms! A hundred throats from the flanks on either side echoed back, To arms! Each ranger thrust the handle of his burning torch into the forest floor and lifted his hatchet. Charge! came the cry. To the king! came the answer, and the rangers, mounted on elks, leaped toward the forest. Standing outside the ring of flames, Hero realized he was unarmed for battle. Dismounting, he yanked a gnarled root, solid and lethal, from the earth. In that moment, rough hands grabbed him, throwing him against a huge oak, his breath jammed in his lungs. He felt hard blows against his chest and his shoulders. Then he heard a cry of pain, his own cry. Instinctively, Hero fell to the ground and rolled away from his attacker. Boom! A cudgel landed near his head. He rolled again. A near miss! A terrible anger rushed into Hero. Through the assault, he had held on to his own club. He ruthlessly plunged it into the midsection of the form standing above him. This time... He heard the stranger's shriek of pain. Hero scrambled to his feet, his lungs starving for air. He raised his club and crashed it against the head of the breaker. Hero watched as his enemy crumpled into a still form. Then he bent and yanked back the hood. A white face, bushy eyebrows, and a final teeth-bearing grin appalled the boy. Good work, said a voice behind him. It was a foot soldier. Get ready, burners. Hero drew breath finally in long pants. How do you... Fight a burner. Fight fire with fire, said the soldier, and he drew two burning brands from the circle of flames, tossing one to the boy. Just do what I do. Nay, nay, nay. The ominous battle cry grew louder. Don't listen to the naysayers, warned the foot soldier. Here come the burners. A band of dark shadows sprang out of the woods. The burners' torches glowed with lurid light. Hero's heart despaired. He remembered branding long ago. His stomach and back began to throb. Charge! yelled the foot soldier beside him. Amazed, Hero watched the man rush the ominous burners. Nay, 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 thought Hero. What is the use of one against so many? Come on, lad! Fatigue gripped Hero like bands of steel. Despair chained his heart. How could the king win against such evil? Burners surrounded the lone foot soldier. One of the burners thrust a poker at him. It caught the fighter's clothes, but he whirled free, then held his torch at arm's length, and turned and turned, widening the distance between himself and his enemies. Nay, nay, nay. Come on, lad, give me a hand! Through the fear that froze him, Hero heard another voice. To the kingdom! It was the voice of the king. Hero grabbed his brand. He screamed, I'll give you two hands! Then plunged through the ring of burners flailing and thrusting with a mighty energy. Back to back, the two subjects of the king stood. Thrust! The flames leaped from the brands in their hands and curled around a burner. Yeah! One of the burners yelped and fled from the circle. Here, when the foot soldier whacked their torches at the enemy, knocking the pokers of two burners to the ground and lighting the garment of another in flames. Soon this band had turned and fled into the forest. Hero again heard the voice of the king. To the emperor of all! To the one who always is! Thunder rolled and the rains finally came. The raging flames, which had all been contained within the circle of sacred flames, wavered back and forth, sputtered up and down, and lie still, quenched by the driving rain. A great wail rose out of the distance. Retreat! Retreat! Hooves pounded in the forest as rangers chased the evil ones through the dark night toward the keyhole entrance to Great Park. Finally, the circle of sacred flames itself blazed up high to meet the sky, and then it too was extinguished. Exhausted, Hero turned back toward Outpost Meadow, just in time to see the flames burn low and to see the king lower his scepter. Mercy and Ranger Commander stood on either side of him. Soon, dawn broke, the rain stopped, and the hum of the hatchets faded away. The gates to Great Park slammed closed. The animal herd fled into the forest, and each man and woman returned to their loved ones. Nothing remained on the battlefield where the War of Fires had been fought. But the scorched earth, smelling like damp ashes, and three weary figures in the middle of Outpost Meadow, an old woman, an old caretaker, and a young peasant.
They bent their heads together and held each other. Then the peasant whispered, To the restoration, and lifted his hands to the sky. So the raging fire in the forest was quenched by a greater power, for there are some things that cannot be moved, that cannot be shaken, that are beyond burning.